So today, uh, so this talk is given by Lu, Dr. Ji Gen Lu. Uh, actually, it should be pronounced Lu Ji Gen <laughs> in, in our traditional way. Um, Ji Gen uh, graduated from National Jiao Tong University, and then he did a few years of postdoc at Academia Sinica and went to Simon Fraser and then Indiana University now. He is a research, uh, uh, research assistant, research fellow uh, at National Taiwan Normal University. And he's going to tell us his research from zero mode to topological superconductivity in graphene. That's welcome, Dr. Lu. Uh, thank you, everybody. I want to thank the organizer for inviting me to give a talk here. Well, especially to to a few people, very very good. And uh, <clears throat> today, I I would like to talk about some of my previous research. And uh, actually, it's, it's related to the zero. I have been I've been studying zero mode for for some time, and uh, somehow I find it is very re relevant to the topological superconductivity. So, so today, uh, because actually th th this problem actually all come from the, because in 2004 people find actually graphene can be made in, in, in laboratory. So this problem I all uh, was uh, inspired by, by this ama amazing type of materials. So I will, I will start with uh, discussing a little bit about, about graphene. So you know graphene is actually, uh, okay. So, so that's the first part. The second part, I will talk about what is the, what, because you, you see the zero mode in a lot of different contexts. But I will specify what, what, I, what do I mean in, in, in this talk. And in the end, I will try to uh, discuss, uh, actually this is a topic it was also discussed in the morning, which is the condensate of the charge skirming. So it's a non-BCS type superconductivity. <coughs> So actually, graphene is an amazing material because uh, you know, for electronic applications, uh, electron has the highest mobility in this material. It's about 1,000 times better than, than silicon. Uh, so, <coughs> so you can see a lot of form, different form, from one, one uh, single layer graphene to two layer, and uh, you can also have uh, carbon nanotube and uh, buckyball. So why, but, but to physicists, why, why graphene is also interesting? It's, it's actually because the, the, lat the lattice structure is very simple. It's a honeycomb lattice. And if you just consider the uh, simplest tie binding model, you can see actually the spectrum is uh, actually uh, it's very, very, very special. So near a few points, so-called the Dirac point, the spectrum is linear. And uh, the, there's no gap. So this is so-called a semi-metal. And the band span conduction band touch at uh, a point. So even though it's a two-dimensional system, but the Fermi surface are a set of points. <coughs> of course, uh, in my talk, my, 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 I, I, would like, I, will, I will focus on, on the a cousin of graphene, which is uh, two-layer graphene. So in two-layer graphene, if you only consider the most important vertical hopping, which is the, the vertical, I mean, the, the vertical gamma one here, the spectrum is actually very similar to single leg graphene, except that originally here is a linear band touching, but here is a quadratic band touching. So still, it's met, uh, still it is a semi-metallic phase, but uh, the spectrum is very different. And besides that, we can. Uh, it's easier to make it make it into a semiconductor or insulator by simply apply a different off voltage on the top and the bottom layers. So you can see that actually, the simple explanation for that is actually when you apply different voltage on different layers, the so-called chiral symmetry is broken because uh, on the on the top on, on this uh, on the, in the top layer. The low energy uh, lattice is this one, and, uh, and on, on the bottom one is, is the, uh, the lattice is another another one. But you, if you apply a voltage 
you somehow break the sublattice symmetry so that open a gap at the, at the Dirac point. But uh, I have to emphasize that uh, we, if we want to open a gap in single algorithm, in single algorithm it, it has been a very difficult problem. It is, it is actually a million, million dollar problem because once you, 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 you can do it, you can make a graphene into a transistor. Yes. Uh, no, actually, because you, you see, there's a, there are four bands here, but for the lowest energy here, you actually it's only related to uh, to another honeycomb lattice, but one sub lattice from top layer, the other from bottom layer. So so actually, it's equivalent to another honeycomb lattice, but but when you apply voltage on, on different layers, you somehow apply a positive voltage um, to one sublattice, negative voltage to another sublattice. So the originally, it somehow breaks your rotational symmetry, but we, we call it chiral symmetry because A and B sublattice are, not, are no longer the same. So, 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 so let me start uh, why it, it, it is hard to open a gap in, 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 uh, in graphing or in, in honeycomb lattice. This is a work done by uh, Xu Chen Zhang's group. So they consider a, a, a Herbert model, so which consider a, a honeycomb lattice, and uh, they have several. I mean, in, in the first in the first instance, he consider a spinless model. So you don't have on-site uh, cooling interactions. You only have uh, the first correction. The uh, first interaction term is the V one, which is the nearest neighbor cool interaction. He also have V2 and uh, the last one is the uh, chemical potential. So you can actually do some mean field decomposition. You find, you find a phase diagram like this. So the reason why it's, it is hard to open a gate is, is actually you can see from here. The semi-metallic phase uh, resist uh, before you, you your, your, your interaction strength is sufficiently strong. So your V1 has to be larger than your hopping, much uh, a little larger. Then, then you can have, you, you, go, you go from semi-metallic phase to charge density, charge density wave phase, which is you have A and B sub that is different. Or, or on the other hand, you can, but since V2 in our, in, our, in our imagination, V2 is always less than V1, but you can also consider V2 a tuning parameter. So when V2 is sufficiently large, uh, the system can go from semi-metallic phase to go to the quantum anomalous phase, in which you have the uh, chiral current uh, for A sub lattice in one direction, and uh, another chiral current along different different direction in, in, in the different 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 sub lattice. So this is for spin, so this is a phase diagram for spinless model, and you can also uh, consider a spin. Uh, fermion with spin in a honey honeycomb lattice. So you will have another parameter, so-called U. U is the on-site cooling repulsion. So there you can, of course, your U has to be, again, be sufficiently uh, larger than the T. So you can you can go to the, uh, have another phase, so-called a spin density wave, which you have a spin one, spin up, uh, A sub lattice, spin down, you mean B sub lattice. This is a uh, honeycomb, just one layer. Just one layer, yeah. Uh, so Zero doping. Yeah. So, so actually, the essence of this uh, this kind of phase diagram is actually because the you know there's a very simple explanation. So it is because the density of state at the Dirac point is zero. So it's it's very hard to enhance the interaction. So actually, so so. So that, that is why people want to study the graphene in, in, in the presence of the constant magnetic field. Because, because once you apply magnetic field, uh, there will be a Landau level at zero energy. So there you have a very large uh, density state. So it, you can, it's easier to open a gap. So actually there's a recently in 2011, uh, the group by Philly Kim, they, 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 they measured the uh, Excitation gap uh, of graphene, and he considered several fittings, but but I, I'm I'm considering in the case of the new equal zero quantum Hall effect, 
So actually, define actually the, the gap is no longer zero here. So so you can actually so so in some in some simple words, per thing in in the presence of the magnetic field, it is become a, an insulator. So the gap can scale linearly with the magnetic field perpendicular to the layers. So so yeah, you can you can also change uh, have two two magnetic field and uh, uh, you can also shift the magnetic field a little bit to distinguish the effect from the Zeeman coupling or the uh, cyclotron orbits, the energy we relate to the energy level between Landau level. So actually there's many, many possible ground state in which you can break, because originally you have uh, SU4 symmetry coming from a spin and the valley. So you can you can have various ways to break this this uh, SU4 symmetry. So there are many different kinds of ground state. So so the the point is here is uh, I, uh, we want uh, the magnetic field is very important. So <coughs> because this in this talk I will talk about the vortex zero mode. So so this is another experiment experimental paper in 2008. So he actually, this group discovered that after, uh, this is a measure of the uh, longitudinal resistance. <coughs> so after your magnetic field is, is larger than some critical value, the, he, he observed, they observed that actually the resistance uh, is shoot up very uh, rapidly. So this, this, this measurement suggests that uh, graphene might enter into an insulating state. So, so this is actually a very inspiring observation for theorists in, in graphing, because uh, actually he, they, they replot this branch, uh, this this the resistance, uh, this branch, with a very particular scaling relation. So the, here is a uh, is a log, but here is a, he rescale is as, as this one. So he find actually a linear dependence between uh, vertical and the horizontal axis. So what does that mean? So actually, they suggest so graphene when the magnetic field is strong enough, so it, it is not only in the insulating state, but uh, there could be some vortices excitations, and these vortices actually carry the current, carry the charge. So actually, the why the resistance scale with this this law because actually, uh, the, your, your, he, he concluded that the, the resistance actually is proportional to, to the dens uh, density of the vortices. So, so it's a question of what? As I will explain later. Actually, in, 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 their, in, in their paper, they, they, they assume it's a Kekule ordering. So the vortices coming from the Kekule order. And uh, this vortices, I mean, the number of vortices depend on, on, the, on the size of the vortices. So, so these vortices uh, actually scale with uh, KT, KT dependence. So this is, this observation is actually is very unique. Still, there, there could be some sort of uh, vortices excitations. Yeah. Okay. So, 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 uh, okay. So this, this, so far, this, I, I, I tell, tell, tell some, some recent experimental result. So, so now, now I'm going to into the subject of the vortices. So, what is the most familiar vortices in the in the solid state physics? The, the, the actually, the most familiar one is the type two superconductor. So, in type two superconductor, uh, above some critical magnetic field strengths, so the magnetic field can actually penetrate into the super superconductor. So there, you can form uh, there are vort vortices, uh, and uh, in the in the middle, there is no all the parameter is zero, but around the vortices the the U1 phase change, uh, changed by 2 pi. So, so actually, type 2 superconductor or, or the S-squared superconductor is a trivial superconductor because, because 
there are many, many ways to say this is a trivial superconductor. One way is actually to say that you can, if you, you cannot find a zero energy vortex bound state here because the, the lowest, the lowest state is actually, uh, is not zero. It's actually delta squared over EF. So this is discovered by, by Karoli and Dijen and Machikon, 1964. So this is the most familiar vortices uh, that we are familiar with. And uh, what, what, what is, it, uh, what is, well, has it, uh, is there any, anything to do with the graphene? Actually, we can, we can, we can also find the vortices in, in graphene, but in a very different context. So now we consider a kind of uh, Kekule bonding or Kekule, Kekule bond ordering. So because uh, in, the previous, in the previous slide, I, I explained a semi-metallic spectrum in which the, all, every bond is, is identical to each other. But here we can consider a more actually uh, another bonding configuration in which uh, your, your unit cell is, is enlarged by uh, three times. So you see a double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond configuration in this kind of so-called calculate bonding. But this, there's, but interestingly, uh, this this bond ordering can give rise to a mass gap to the to the graphene. So, so actually, this this new ordering can is a, uh, equivalent to another, I mean, equivalent to a, a a scattering which which connect to the two different uh, Dirac point in graphene. So in fact. Actually, there are, we can you can you can draw on yourself. There are actually three different kinds of uh, calculate ordering. So there are these three choices you can you can you can you can draw. So so therefore you can actually uh, find out a way to introduce the vortex, because actually you can you can you can in this in this in these three different regions you can you, you can plot uh, each one into one of the regions. So actually, in the, in the in the middle, there will be no no such uh, calculate order. But when you go around the uh, vortices, you, you you can see the uh, bound, uh, bound pattern from one to one to the other. So actually, actually, we can consider this as another vortices in in graphing. So before I I start, uh, I want to. Uh, describe a little bit uh, the fact about the anti-commuting matrices. Uh, so what is the anti-commuting matrices? It's the square matrices that uh, satisfy the anti-commutation relation AB plus BA is zero. So the most familiar one is the two by two matrices. So we, we actually have three, which is uh, sigma x, sigma y, sigma z. All, the, all two of them satisfy the, the relation. <laughs> What about the the next the next simplest one is the four by four matrices. We, we we can have five, or we can call them the Dirac matrices. So actually, we can do the construction, uh, which is sigma x times sigma x y z. So there are three of them here, and the sigma y times i two and sigma z times i two. So there are five gamma matrices here, and we can do the similar construction to a by a matrices, and in the end, we find that there are seven, seven such elements. So by similar construction, we can uh, use uh, sigma x times the five gamma matrices here, and the sigma y times uh, four by four identity, and the sigma z times two by four by identity. So why this is relevant to, to the, to the, to the uh, vortices and uh, zero mode? OK. Uh, so uh, okay, so so because because in in, in the, those anti-commuting matrices represent the the mass gap. So actually, we can uh, construct a very general uh, massive Dirac fermion in in graphene several layer graphene. So so this is the most general most general uh, mean field Hamiltonian. So the kinetic energy, the kinetic energy term is, 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 is written here. So it's a, it's a A by A matrices. 
So this, these two components are, are for the for the sub latest part. So n is actually for different layers. So when n is one, this is just a momentum, linear momentum in the pi. And pi here is is, is to represent the fact we already consider the magnetic field. So so he, this is a, a covariant momentum. And because in if we consider graphene, so graphene has a, uh, several degree of freedom. Uh, it has spin, spin degree of freedom and valley degree of freedom. So in general, we can use the A by A matrices to describe the, the fermions in, in such context. So actually, except two matrices that are very mutually anti-commute, we can have another five matrices. Uh, I call three of them uh, N and two of them M. So there are totally uh, seven matrices here. So we can play some game about uh, around these matrices. We can place, uh, we can we can insert a vortex into uh, two of them. And that that's the first story here. <coughs> so we studied the uh, first study. Uh, we'll, we'll explain it later. So actually, uh, so if, if we have the vortexes in in, in two 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 of the other parameter here, so actually there you you will find a zero mode here. So actually. If we just just like uh, previously, uh, we can consider just just uh, a vortex. So so we don't we don't need to two two mass matches. So here, the the way I insert the uh, vortices is actually I, I let the mass depend on the on the angle on the on the individual angle. So the first two turn are just uh, momentum, uh, which is very, which you need in uh, in graphing. So and uh, actually, so this is an early paper by Yakiv and Rossi. He, he, he said that there will be one zero mode uh, in, in this Hamptonian. It is one zero zero energy solution. So actually, there are people there are people that verify that use this uh, use the latest version of this this uh, Hamptonian to verify. Actually, there there is indeed one zero mode. So another interesting property is actually because uh, actually in this case the gamma matrices are four dimension. So the one, two, three, five are the four four by four gamma matrices. And actually, there's another. Uh, if you remember previously, there's a fifth the fifth uh, element, the fifth the, the fifth gamma matrices, which anti commute each one of them. So this is, we call it gamma naught. So actually, this is a product of the previous four. So actually, this zero mode is the is the eigenstate of this gamma gamma naught. Because actually, uh, this gamma naught anti commute with this this, this Hamptonian. So this this zero mode is actually because it, it just the the energy is exactly zero. So even though the this operator anti commute with the Hamiltonian, but the, this state is the only state that, eigen, that is eigenstate of this so-called chiral operator. So, 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 so far we have established that, okay, if this is a calculate ordering and uh, there's a vortex here, so in the middle of the core, there will be a zero any state. And this zero any state will be eigenstate of the gamma naught. Okay, so what was special about this this uh, zero mode? Actually, we can study the uh, local tensor state because we assume we already know the wave function of this Hamptonian. So we can construct a local local tensor state as a function of energy and the position. And because the the spectrum is symmetric, so there's a relation between positive energy and negative energy. So actually, we can show that. So if there's a single zero vortex mode uh, sitting at exact zero. The charge carried by this, this, this zero mode is actually one half. So if this zero mode is uh, unoccupied, then the total charge, I mean the total charge carried by this vortex is, is minus E over two. On the other hand, if this zero mode is not <coughs> is occupied, 
and the total charge will be the net positive E over two. So actually, this means that this this vortex is not is not the same as the uh, uh, the one in the conventional superconductor because here if you, if you can somehow form a vortices in this kind of Dirac system, these vortices will carry charge. But we have to be careful that because here because the, the the, because if the Fermi level is here, you, you have no idea it is occupied or not occupied. Because the the sign of the board, the sign of the, the charge of the vortices is depend on you occupy or not occupy. So it's kind of fluctuating between plus and minus. So it is not it's not clear whether if in the end we can manage to form these vortices. It's positive or negative charge. But on the other hand, <coughs> We can play this uh, this game a, a little bit because actually we already show that uh, each vortex each vortex can carry a single zero mole charge, single single zero mole. What about we we have two vortices, but uh, one is vortex, the other is anti vortex. So actually, if they are separate far enough, you will have uh, zero mole from each of them. Okay, so. So, but you, you, have, you still have no idea whether it's occupied or not occupied. But here, there's an E over two, here, E over two here. But what about, we have some order parameter from the gamma naught. I mean, there's an order parameter, gamma naught here. And there's another order parameter in the core. I mean, the core is no longer nothing. There's something in the inner core. The order parameter is proportional proportional to the to the gamma norm. But uh, here we can have the the order primary is, is positive and it's mz times gamma norm. And here is minus mz times times gamma gamma norm. So what happens is actually this zero mode can in principle be shown that it will be below previously exactly at the chemical potential. But uh, here is a lower than chemical potential. And the other one from this one is also lower. So now we no longer have the ambiguity. It's, it's very certain that uh, each of them are occupied. So actually, so the total charge of this texture is one, one half plus one half, which is one. So, but on the other hand, what is this texture? Actually, it's a two marrows. So here is we have a one marrow, which is a vortex. But in the middle is a, uh, your spin or order parameter is point to you. But on the other hand, this vortex is anti vortex. Anti vortex. And uh, the order parameter in, in the core is there pointing in the in the black hole. So actually the total Pontryagin index is is one. So somehow we show that the charge of this texture is the same as the topological charge. So this is the conclusion so far. And so far, everything is good. Sorry, I didn't get uh, how mm -hmm. the energy is lower. How, why the energy? Is oh, lower? okay. Because it's actually, actually, without the without the other primary in the core, it, energy is sitting at zero. Right. But actually, this this uh, this eigen this this uh, the wave function the, the state here the zero mode here is actually eigen state of this operator. So you, it, so even though this is operated by the, to 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 this one, it's just a scalar. So, 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 and they, they have different chirality, so you need the, you need to, here is the positive gamma naught, and here is negative to both lower than. Both lower. So, so this is why the ascorbium will be charged. But so far, we have not considered spin yet. So we only consider a fermion without spin. So we only need a four by four matrices. But if we consider spin, we need a eight by eight matrices. Since this charge is topological? Uh, because, the, because the electric charge is from, from one half and one half, which is one. But the, the charge is the, is the same as this topological charge. I mean, this is a spin texture. So you can actually evaluate with the Pontryagin index. So this texture will be equivalent to topological.